Water is something that we have plenty of to drink most of the time, but the intention is there. We have so much water in our world that sometimes it's hard to imagine it being anything other than water. But in truth, what the waters contain all over the world has been exciting scientists for many decades. People often dive into these massive bodies of water and seek out what lies within. And oftentimes, we find something special or unique, but sometimes we find things that even the best of us cannot fully understand. So with that in mind, here now are 20 underwater discoveries that cannot be explained. Number 20. The Ghost Fleet of Truk Lagoon Now, if I'm being honest, finding a ship within a body of water, whether it be a river, a lake, a sea, or even an ocean, is not all that unexplainable. After all, ships go down all the time, especially in ancient times when they didn't have many of the safety features that we have now. The only real question is why they went down where they did. But in the case of this one, I'm not talking about a singular ship. I'm talking about an entire fleet of ships that would be lost to the depths. This is the tale of the ghost fleet of Truk Lagoon. The story begins in the late phases of the Second World War. The United States military would be at war with Japan after the attack on Pearl Harbor. They wanted to return the favor by bombing their fleet where they stood, and they just so happened to be at the Caroline Islands in the South Pacific in a place called Truk Lagoon. There lied the Imperial fleet, and the US bombers that rained down destruction upon them felt no pity in blowing those ships to high heaven. Today, hundreds of Japanese aircraft and other military machinery remains at the bottom of the lagoon, making it one of the world's best World War II wreck dive sites. In the end, it would be determined that 250 Japanese aircraft were destroyed, and more than 50 ships had sank in that one attack. The irony here is that Japan had actually moved extra ships and aircraft to that lagoon only a week before. Clearly, they didn't feel that they would be attacked there, but it's needless to say that they were wrong. Now you may be wondering, why are they still there? Well, simply put, they were actually forgotten. Nobody touched them until 1969 when Jacques Cousteau himself went and filmed the wreckages. Eventually, that would get the attention of divers and of Japan itself, and recovery efforts were then put into place. You can still find some of those ships there, though, as a remembrance of what had come before. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the fancy topic. For today's fancy topic, I will say something dramatic like, Jordan River has finally dried up, and now this has emerged. Now while I can't confirm that the picture you're seeing is actually from the Jordan River after a part of it evaporated, it wouldn't be impossible given how similar things have been found in other bodies of water over the years. According to the tale, this is some kind of mummy that would be found within the river after part of it had dried up. But as to what exactly had happened to it, or who it was once is unclear. Now that isn't the fun part of finding things like this, mind you. It wouldn't be fun if everything was immediately clear. There's wonder in the world, and mystery and desire, and lots of things to learn about. Taking a look at the body, it's clear that something really odd happened to it. Typically, when bodies are found within water, they're worn down until they're nothing but bones. Yet this person seems to have been calcified or even covered in some kind of substance that we don't exactly recognize. Plus, if you look at the position that they're in, they were clearly held up like that for one reason or another, and it almost looks like part of them is fused to the ground. Will we ever be able to figure out what happened to this person? Well, it's hard to say, but someone will definitely try if it's real. As always, you can comment down below using the hashtag fancy topic and let me know what you think in relation to what I just showed you on the screen. Number 19, the Yonaguni Monument. Sometimes it is the strangest things that we find in the water that become the things that we know have been there for an untold amount of time. And yet we have no idea what we're looking at. I have no idea what I just read. 
I don't write the words. An excellent example of this can be found off the coast of Japan and Taiwan via the Yonaguni Monument. It was officially discovered back in 1986 by a diver who was simply trying to find a place where people could observe some sharks. But instead, he found a massive monolith of rocks that absolutely stood out against the backdrop of the ocean. Since it was found, a debate had started about what exactly the monument was and how it even came to be. because the rock structures that are there seem to be two different things on two different groups of people. The first group thinks that it's nothing more than a natural construction, one that was possibly formed by the ocean over the course of many years. That's not all far-fetched in the slightest. For one very simple reason, many things of this nature have been found over the years. However, other people look at the monument and notice that certain sections of the rock faces don't exactly appear to have been worn down, but rather have been shaped by human hands. That's technically not possible either, as many man-made structures have sunk to the depths of the ocean in the past. The debate has been going on for decades now, and neither side is any closer to proving the other one wrong. Where do I fall on this? Well, I'm staying out of it. Like I said, it could be either option based on past experience. So, until someone gets definitive proof that they're correct, it will forever remain a mystery. Number 18. The Antikythera Mechanism now, arguably one of the most famous mysterious objects ever discovered in the water, the Antikythera mechanism would be found off the Greek islands of the same name. The first part, not mechanism, in 1901. It was found within a ship's wreckage and, from basically day one, caught the minds and imaginations of just about everyone who laid eyes upon it. It's not really hard to see why, because after doing some research, they realized that this was a kind of analog computer from apparently around 82 BC. But what would such a computer be used for? Simply put, it was used as a kind of astronomy guide. It could be used to map the movements of the moon and the sun, predict eclipses, and more. It would be perfect for sailors to use as they often need to know what's going to happen with the sun, moon, and stars as they travel. So if we know what it does, how is it unexplainable? Well, there are a few more fine points that are still having trouble with. First off, while we do know how it works, it's still a mystery how the Greeks were able to make such a device so incredibly accurate. There have been many modern attempts to remake the Antikythera mechanism, and it's not gone as well as you may think. Plus, you also need to think of this in a more grand sense. In our modern age, it would be easy to think, hey, let's go and make a computer that can do this for us. But in ancient Greece, they had no such devices, and as such, had no sense of how something like this could even operate. And yet, somehow, they still made one anyways. No other device like it has ever been found, so clearly the Greeks are hiding some secrets about just how good they are. Number 17. Train Graveyard Remember how I said that it wasn't an unexplainable thing for ships to end up in the various bodies of water? Well, that's true for ships, but not so true for something like a train. Trains are usually built on land and then escorted to where they need to be via a track. So why is it that there's a graveyard of them outside of New Jersey of all places? That is a mystery that is indeed an unexplainable thing for multiple reasons. The only part of the mystery that I can say that I know the answer to is that when these trains were made, they were part of the 1850s based upon their construction. But everything after that gets just a little bit muddled. For example, it remains a mystery how the two steam engines were sunk. There's no historical records of them ever being built in the first place, and no record of them being lost. Which you would think is odd because someone had to get them built and then ship them out to where they could potentially become lost in the waters of New Jersey. But instead, there's nothing. Explorers believe that the engines were lost in a storm five miles off the coast of Long Branch, New Jersey, as they were being transported from Boston to the Mid-Atlantic. But if that was actually the case, why wouldn't there have been a record of them being lost at sea? And where is the wreckage of the boat that they would have been attached to? You need to think about it. They wouldn't have been loosely left on a boat as that would have been very dangerous. Regardless of what the true answer may be, you can go diving in these waters and explore the trains for yourself. Perhaps you'll even find an answer that others don't. Number 16. The Molinier Underwater Sculpture Park That's right, someone decided to make an underwater sculpture park. 
Now, usually this is where we would make a joke like, ah, clearly it's the methods and artistic vision that are unexplainable. But that's ironically not even the case here at all. First and foremost, you're going to find this park in Grenada. So if you're not there, well, you're not going to see it outside of this video. The 75 works cover an area of 800 square meters and are located in a series of sand patches and gullies between natural rock formations. And if you're curious, yes, the sculptures aren't that far from the surface. And as a result, you can see them up close through scuba diving. Or if you have a glass bottom boat to pass over them in the area. So now we'll dive into the reasoning and rationale behind all of this. The artist behind the thing, a British sculptor by the name of Jason DeCares Taylor, had a vision of what this underwater sculpture park could mean. Mainly, it meant a place not only for people to visit, but offer some help with the local wildlife. Coral reefs of the world sometimes are simply not enough for sea creatures to find a home within, and so by building up this park, they can find new homes in and around the sculptures. Hence why you're seeing pictures of the sculptures being covered in various entities and not actually looking like art. Now ironically, another benefit of the place is that it takes people away from looking at the reefs themselves and potentially causing them damage. So yeah, the place serves a whole lot of purposes. Number 15. Vampire Squid now, I'm going to dive right into the madness on this next one because if you look at the scientific name for the vampire squid, it translates to the vampire squid from hell. So naturally, that means that this is one of the most feared creatures of the deep and that we should hope to never approach the thing while we're swimming in the depths, right? Well, no. In fact, this is hardly the most devastating squid that you'll meet with in the depths, and I'm not even sure where it would crack in the top 25, but it would be pretty low on the list. It's not even a third of a meter long, and it's not exactly a predator that strikes fear into the hearts of men and beasts. In fact, it doesn't want to consume either of them. It's also uh, something that eats dead organic material, only living cephalopod species that doesn't enjoy live prey. Now, that doesn't sound very appetizing, does it? However, it does work for this sort of squid, which it technically is not one, as it has the slowest metabolism of anything within its species. And that's what it takes to live in the dark depths of the cold oceanic world. How it truly came to be this way, well, that still remains a mystery. Number 14. Pavlopetri. History has taught us that just about anything can happen when Mother Nature is involved. And if you want proof of that, you need only to look at what's going on with the Pavlopetri. And what's going on with it is that it's sunk, like a whole entire city sunk in the Mediterranean Sea. The settlement contains both Neolithic and Bronze Age material, and the town itself is believed to have flourished in the period between 3000 and 1000 years BC. That makes it one of the oldest sunken cities in the world. And yes, that also means that there are other sunken cities out there. But the real mystery here is why? did it sink to the bottom of the sea. One of the biggest theories about all this is Mother Nature was trying to show off her muscle. Some people think it's as simple as rising sea levels that simply swallowed the city whole, while others theorize that it was a tsunami or even an earthquake that led to the city meeting its watery grave. Either way, the place is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and it's going to be protected and explored by the right people so that more can be learned about it in the future. Number 13. Cenote Angelita When it comes to the waters of our world, there's little doubt that things happen within them that we don't truly fully understand at first. An excellent example can be found in Mexico, and if you go into the waters, you'll find a cenote, which means a water-filled cave. That may not sound like the greatest adventure ever, but when it comes to the cenote angelita, there's something special within this particular cave, because due to how the water in the cave interacts with what's around it, there's a literal underwater river within its watery domain. That's right, there's a river that not only exists, but also flows within the water, and it goes right out into the ocean. It needs to be noted that while this is a popular diving site, it's also a place where you can die if you're not careful. <laughs> due to the chemicals that you could accidentally inhale if things go wrong. However, if you are able to make it through, 
you're going to see a place that looks like no other spot around. And that alone is enough to keep people coming. Not to mention, make them also wonder what other things like this may exist within the world. Number 12. Shark Statue When you're in the water, as movies will love to tell you, the most dangerous thing you could face in there is a shark. Sharks can be vicious man-eaters that will not hesitate to rip you limb from limb. So you may just have to wonder why anyone would think it's a great idea to place a shark statue in the middle of a lake. Yes, this is a real thing that happened, and I'm really trying to think of a good reason for it. That statue in question can be found in a lake in Switzerland. And not only is it huge, it's absolutely freaky looking. Like, seriously. It looks like it wants to eat anyone that even comes close to it. And so you may be thinking, well, who's dumb enough to make this and drop it in a lake in Switzerland? Nobody really knows. However, it may have actually been a prop from a movie that was filmed in the area. So in theory, it could have just been forgotten about and left there, which is dumb in a lot of ways. And I'll just move on before the shark statue makes a move on me. Number 11, Lion City. You'll find Lion City in China. The place is a historical gold mine in many respects, and some people even call it the Atlantis of the East. But the mystery for some of you uh, will be how it sunk. Sadly, not only is it not a mystery, it is a tragic tale. In 1959, China was trying to make a dam and a hydroelectric station, and to do that, they needed to make a lake and relocate about 300,000 people. That also meant that when they made the lake, by flooding the area, the Lion City had to be sunk. That's right, it was China and its government that purposefully sunk that city all for a dam. It's a tragic waste of history, not to mention many of the people from the area had been there with their families for centuries. Now, if we can't honor the history that we have, what hope is there for the future? It kind of makes you wonder now, doesn't it? Number 10. The Bimini Road Let's talk about something a little more lighthearted, shall we? If you go to the Bahamas, about six meters off the North Bimini coast, you'll eventually find a sort of road that is over 450 meters long. This is the legendary Bimini Road, and not unlike the Yonaguni Monument, there's plenty of speculation about what the origins of this road are. And if you're curious, yes, it really does look like a road when you're following it, It's formed of blocks and even has a parallel path that you can follow. When it was found, a lot of people thought it was part of a large civilization that had sunk, while others noted that it was comprised of beach rock and that the large slab of it had simply broken down over time and formed the blocks that you see now. The truth? Well, it's out there somewhere. Number 9. Lake Michigan Stonehenge Stonehenge is one of the most mysterious things on the planet, and that's why you'll find clones of it all over the world. Seriously, look up Carhenge. It's pretty neat. However, in Lake Michigan, the structure was referenced when divers found an odd assortment of limestone blocks within the famous Great Lake. The blocks aren't only there, they were put into a circular pattern with them set a few meters apart from each other. And what are the theories for this one? Well, the most prominent one is that the sculpture was made by a Native American tribe from between 1000 to 1500 CE. And to be clear, this one was proven to be man-made, so there's no debate about that. As such, it's been dubbed a landmark of Lake Michigan, and many people are still trying to study it to learn more. Number eight, SS Thistlegorm. It's a rarity that a sunken ship is dubbed a diver's paradise, as usually these ships have a tragic history to them. But with the SS Thistlegorm, it's a completely different story. Back during the Second World War, ships from the Allies had to go the long way around regarding Africa to safely deliver their supplies. The SS Thistlegorm was one such ship that had to do that, but its route would be blocked by another ship, so it made port, where it sadly became an easy target for German bombers and was then sunk to the depths below. But because of its history and the way that nature changed it over the years, the Thistlegorm is hailed as a wondrous spot for divers to enjoy as they enter the Egyptian Red Sea. 
Is it worth the hype? Well, I'll let you be the judge in the comments down below. Number 7. Apollo 11 Rocket Engines When it comes to NASA, they work hard to ensure that everything they send up into space is safe for those who are on board their craft, and that nothing falls down from them onto the people watching them go up. That also means that a lot of space parts fall into the ocean, likely to never be recovered again. One such artifact included the legendary Apollo 11 rocket engines, which had helped to get three men to the moon. Despite their importance in history, NASA was not able to find the rockets on their own. That was until Jeff Bezos threw his hat into the ring. Yes, really, Jeff Bezos launched his own expedition and was able to find the rockets and return them to NASA. Naturally, they were grateful. Obviously, the real mystery with this one is how exactly that Bezos got so lucky and found them before the leagues of NASA people could. But, you know, when you have that much money lying around, you spend it in ways that are going to make you happy and will also frustrate others. Number 6. Lake Superior Locomotive now we have another train story for you, but this time the origins of it are known, even if it doesn't clear up everything about the locomotive itself. In this case, a train would be found in 2006 that had sunk over a hundred years previous in Lake Superior. But how did it sink? Apparently, it fell off a cliff and into the lake. And that alone raises a lot of questions, but I'm about to answer some of them, so don't worry. The incident in question occurred when the freight train crashed into a rock slide that was covering the railroad tracks and that sent this D-10 steam locomotive, a tender car, and several boxcars into the lake. So at the very least, we know what its true origins are. The real twist here is that it would take over a hundred years to find the thing, but if you don't know where to look, sometimes you can't seek out what you're actually searching for. Number 5. World's Deepest Underwater Cave now I'll tell you about this underwater cave in the Czech Republic. It is the deepest underwater cave, one that is so deep in fact that in 2016, humanity went as deep as it could go on its own and it took a robot to go the rest of the way. It's further proof that humanity is doomed and that robots will eventually replace us all, but that is a topic for another time. The depth of the cave was over 400 meters deep, which is much deeper than the Empire State Building is tall. So yeah, it makes a whole lot of sense that you'll need a robot to even go that deep. It's believed that that deep cave would be formed by carbon dioxide filled hot mineral water bubbling up from an underground spring, and that's in contrast to other caves that were simply carved out by rain. Number 4. Underwater Forest now, I'm not going to simply talk about a tree that was found underwater or a bunch of stumps or logs that were lost at sea, but instead about a full-on forest that was buried underwater and remained there until a hurricane would reveal it to the world. The trees in question were unveiled in the Gulf of Mexico after Hurricane Ivan had churned up the water and revealed that there were cypress trees hidden within sediment that had apparently been there for over 60,000 years. And again, it was a full-on forest, one from what many felt was an island that had once resided where the Gulf of Mexico now is. The only bad thing is that they didn't have much time to study the trees, as the natural conditions around them made them decompose quite quickly. Number 3 Immortal Jellyfish Now we'll have a look at a creature that could be defined as impossible, and yet it is quite real, and it's quite possible for many reasons that I don't fully comprehend. The Immortal Jellyfish is just that, it's a fish that cannot die through the natural cycle of aging. Now sure, it can be killed through physical means or even being eaten by prey, but it cannot grow old and die. There's a process within its body which allows it to revert itself from maturity into a juvenile and then basically restart its entire life cycle. The mysteries of the creature are numerous, and yes, scientists are trying to see if this can be replicated. Because if it can, well, wow the possibilities. Number 2. The Frilled Shark 
One of the things that we're taught in school is that pretty much every creature from the ancient past has gone from one method of extinction or another. But that's not entirely true. There are actually things called living fossils that still reside in the world and prove that the ancient past is still there. The frilled shark is one of them. This creature can be found in various parts of our world, and it shows that sharks were not always how we picture them to be. This one looks more like an eel than anything else, and that's not to say that it's not scary, because it apparently has over 300 teeth and has been alive for over 80 million years. And if they are alive, what else from the past might be out there? And I'm not talking about a Megalodon either. Stupid Jason Statham movie. Number one, the purple orb. Now, this is something that you probably didn't think would end this video, but in 2016, scientists were doing some diving when they found a crab near a weird-looking purple orb. They had to actually fight the crab to get the purple orb and examine it more. Based on pictures and video that you're probably seeing right now, you may think that it was some kind of rare rock or even crystal, but you would be wrong. Upon closer examination, it's believed to be a kind of sea slug. Now, you probably didn't expect that, and perhaps that's really the point, because most would say, well, that's not alive, and yet it is. There's a lot of things that we don't understand about the ocean, and this purple orb sea slug thing indicates that we still have a whole lot left to learn. That's all from the realm of the underwater depths of the world and the nearly unexplainable things that have been found there. Which one of them shocked and amazed you the most? And do you feel that there are more of them waiting within the depths? Be sure to let us know in the comments down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.